are all couplings and connectors that look like this okay to use outside? So there's a difference between a compression fitting and a rain tight fitting. If you'll notice on the inside of a compression fitting, a normal compression fitting, all it is is a type of uh, connector that looks you know, just like a set screw connector. That's an indoor only connector. It, but instead of it relying on a set screw to tighten to the conduit, it uses a means of compression. But these compression are meant to be used indoors. Now, a lot of people used to use these outdoors and a lot of manufacturers back in the day, years ago, were listing these on their packages as okay to use in wet environments or okay to use in like rain and weather. But then they were tested to find that they actually don't keep any water out in rain conditions. So they had to go through a redesign and actually start making fittings that have the word rain tight on them. And how you recognize them is a lot of these things that are rain tight actually have like this one, there's like a blue coating. Now, not everything is going to have a blue coating. Some of them are gonna have like a weird kind of brassy coating instead of it being perfectly silver. Um, some of them are a little bit hard to identify whether or not they are, but most of them will actually say rain tight right on the coupling or right on the connector. The other thing is you can tell that there's this little bushing and this bushes against moisture coming into the enclosure once the conduit and the fitting are attached and tightened. So there's one barrier for uh, any moisture to enter through here. And then inside, you'll notice a normal compression coupling only has a metal ring on the inside that tightens to the conduit. Whereas these have a metal ring, but they also have this little plastic bit inside that is an additional um, moisture barrier that allows for some more added protection for any moisture entering in through uh, the actual outside of this fitting. Now, one thing that I didn't do was take the time to go through all the NEMA white pages and UL listings to figure out what the compression coupling and connector, I will do all of that. I'll probably do that in a members only video. For those of you who don't know, go to electricianu.com. We have like a members section, kind of a big deal. Uh, members have uh, premium videos that don't get put out on YouTube. So it's members only, tons of content in there. We have courses, like entire courses on like sizing services, on um, building services, on electrical theory, on transformers, all kinds of stuff. And every month we drop a new course. And some of them are like an hour long, some of them are like eight hours long and we have exam prep courses that we're putting out we have continuing education all kinds of crazy stuff so check out electricianu.com if you want like deeper dive stuff on this i'm gonna go with the fresh new 2023 code book and let's see what it says so the first thing that we're going to be looking at is emt because we want to figure out the fittings so we're going to be in 358 358.42 says couplings and connectors so what it says about couplings and connectors specifically for emt which is all these are listed to be used is couplings and connectors used with emt shall be made up tight okay where buried in masonry or concrete they shall be concrete type so there's actually specific fittings used for concrete they have to be listed for that where installed in wet locations, they shall comply with 314.15. 314.15 is damp and wet locations. In damp and wet locations, boxes, conduit bodies, outlet box hoods, and fittings shall be placed or equipped so as to prevent moisture from entering or accumulating within the box, conduit body, or fittings. Boxes, conduit bodies, outlet uh, box hoods, and fittings installed in wet locations shall be listed for use in wet locations. And then it goes on about drain openings that you can put into boxes. but. Um, the problem with these old compression style is that they were listed on the box. I shouldn't even say listed. They were written on the boxes and packages that they were rainproof or that they were rain tight, weatherproof or waterproof. But through testing found that that was not actually the case. So they had to update to a new product in all manufacturers. These are Topaz brand, um, but now there's a new standard and they have to uh, pass that standard and that testing. So some of the other things that uh, there were some references to, um, we have 225.22, raceways on exterior surfaces of buildings or other structures. Raceways on exteriors of buildings or other structures shall be arranged to drain and shall be listed or approved for use in wet locations. Again, it doesn't say it has to be rain tight, it just says wet locations. 230.53, raceways to drain. Where exposed to weather, raceways and closing service entrance conductors shall be listed or approved for use in wet locations and arranged to drain. 
Doesn't actually say rain tight though, but the fittings themselves are rain tight. I'm getting hung up on a silly issue here. Um, it's just to say that it can be kind of confusing when you're reading through code to try to figure out why somebody in the field or an inspector is coming up to you and they're saying, hey, you can't, you have to put a rain tight fitting. You can't just put the compression and then you go in here and look and you're like, well, it doesn't say rain tight. It just says it has to be listed for wet location. And because all these manufacturers back in the day had that stuff on their packages, it kind of confused people. And then you have people like my era where that was the issue, you know, up for a long time, just still using them. And then all of a sudden one day you fail an inspection and that's as electricians, that's how we find out when things change, unless you're reading every document in the industry and trying to keep up with every little change and paying $800 for one UL listing document so you can read, nobody's doing that. I mean, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. <laughs> I mean, people that make code are doing that, but I'm out in the field working and doing that. So I'm kind of like an extra nerd. Um, but that's just to say, like, we don't find this stuff out until usually we fail an inspection. It's like, oh, okay, there's a, a new code or a new standard. Or if your state's continuing education, like makes you learn stuff, which most of them are the minimums, um, except for our continuing education, it's like these videos, but you just get to watch them and get credit. So you should check out our continuing education, link in the description below. <laughs> there might be some of you guys out there that are still using these compression fittings and you just didn't realize that it's not okay because we've been using them for years and years and years. It's all right, just uh, understand that you're doing things wrong. <laughs> you're not providing a, an actual moisture proof, weather proof, rain tight environment. Uh, so you need to start using these rain tight fittings is all jokes aside, you do need to be doing this. So just make sure when you go and do something outdoors, you can use these compression fittings all day long indoors if you want to. I mean, a lot of people do. A lot of people just prefer them rather than the singular point of a set screw holding that in place. They like the compression because it compresses down on the entire surface area of the conduit. So you can still use them for that. Don't use set screw stuff outdoors for sure because like you're just begging for water to get in that. Um, make sure that you're using rain, the rain tight stuff. Now, another thing, if you have more questions like this about weird little things like this, you should join our Discord server. I know a lot of people are like, I don't care about Discord. I don't like Discord. It's just another app, right? You have 50 apps on your phone. Download one more. <laughs> There's a community of thousands of electricians, literally like the closest people in my community that all day long we just share, you know, messages, uh, show pictures of our work, what kind of tools we like, if there's code questions, if there's anything like that. It's a really tight knit community of uh, electricians. And I definitely think you should come be a part of our group. Now, if you're interested in some videos that actually deal with EMT, I've got a video right here about EMT. This is a really, really good video. Um, if you're interested in for like some tips on how to work with EMT, I've got another video right here, pretty rad. So, love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.